everybody, Mike here. Yep, I'm gonna take it apart. Coming up. So for those of you subscribed to my channel, I just did the unboxing video for this Starlink dish yesterday. But today, Starlink has officially announced their bug bounty program for the Starlink internet service. And it includes these dishes. So what's a guy to do? I've got this one right here. I'm gonna take it apart and see what's inside. My channel has always been about understanding the technology behind Starlink. For those of you who are just interested in using Starlink, there'll be a lot of interesting stuff here, but don't worry, I've got a line on a second dish that I'm gonna be using for all of my How Does Starlink Work videos. That's going to be my brother's dish, who's also got an invite. And this one here is going to be used for the teardown and figuring out how it works internally. I was a little bit conflicted when I thought about this at first, because if I tear this one down, that means one of you out there who are still waiting for your beta invite are gonna to have to wait a little bit longer. And I've always really felt strongly about getting access myself, so I feel for you. But I figure this is one dish, so one person will be delayed, but everybody will get to see what's inside here. So, here we go. I'm gonna rearrange the camera to give you a closer view. Okay, so first up is this back panel. You can see the actual support rod here and the base here. This circle, you can feel it rotates a little bit. So it's, it's a separate piece from the main outside body. So what we're gonna do, and as I go through the video, I've got some detailed photos that I'll overlay over the, the video. We're gonna pop off this cover. So I'm using a toolkit from iFixit, and you saw in the, the photo, there's a small gap in here, a little hole, and I'm going to just pry it up. And then pry the rest of the cover up. And you can see that pops this out. And there we go, our first look inside the Starlink dish. All right, so what we can see here is the same mounting shaft, and there's two motors, one on each side, and this dark black wire is the ethernet cable coming down through the motor mount, and these two wires are two conductors each for the control of each motor. This circle here is a hole with like a sticker on top of it, so I'll peel that off in just a second. But first I'm gonna show you some details of these motors here. Okay, so the two motors both have gears on them and then the shaft has a gear as well. So it's a neat setup where both motors turn the same direction, the shaft will go up and down. If they turn in opposite directions, the shaft will rotate or if the shaft is fixed, the dish will rotate. So that allows the dish to rotate in both directions and tilt side to side to make sure that it's level up with the sky. Okay, next I'm gonna remove this uh, guard plate here. So this is what actually seals the bottom of the dish to prevent animals and bugs and snow and stuff from getting in. This seal is not watertight, but it would keep any larger objects so. So I'm gonna take this off next. Okay, all the screws are out, so I'm going to lift this off. It's two pieces, so it's a little bit annoying here. Okay, so there's a view of the back of it. You can see the gear mechanism, much more detail there. There's some white, probably lithium grease there. Uh, this doesn't fit over the boot, so I'm gonna to try to disconnect the motors and see if I can get that off there.
So there's a little catch on the boot. And there we've got one off. I'll get a detailed shot of that. And then we'll do the same on the other side. All right, I've disconnected the motor leads. Now I'm going to remove these four Torx head screws and see if that releases this, this mechanism. Okay, all four of those screws are out. Now I'm just gonna try to lift this off gently. There's a little clip holding the ethernet cable in place. And there's a look at the underside. But yeah, I can put this unit aside. And there's what's underneath. So you can see these are the holes the screws seat into. They've got a small metal uh, sleeve to reinforce them. Okay, next up is this little sticker. It's like a, a piece of fabric sticker on top. So I'm just gonna try to peel that off and see what's underneath. Okay, so I'm gonna try to just lift this off with a blade, try to protect it. Let's see what's in here. Okay, not much, but there is an SMA port. Okay, so I'm guessing something like this must be for their test process. They must have to test something using that port, and then they seal it all back up after their quality assurance per, uh, tests. Okay, now that I've got everything disconnected here, what I'm left with is this white piece of plastic backing seems to be still attached to the phased array front. It doesn't just lift off like I'd hoped when you undo these screws, which means there's more in here that we need to get access to, but I'm afraid it might require some permanent disassembly, possibly un pulling apart some glued contact uh, along the edge here where the white plastic meets the black. So I was hoping I could do this with the dish intact, but not sure. So I've been trying to get the white backing off and you can see here I've started experimenting, seeing if I could get some of these blue uh, spudgers through, I think they call them, to, to separate the white plastic from the um, phase array panel on the front but it seems like it's definitely not going to come off easily and I'm a little bit afraid of breaking the phased array portion because I'd like the antenna to continue to work even though it's not weatherproof. So what I've been doing, let me just set this down here, I do have a small bore scope here so you can see on the end is a little light and a little camera and I've got pull that off here a low battery but I've got a small tablet here which I can see what I'm looking at so I can stick this down through this opening and actually start to get a look around inside the chassis. And what I was looking for was some sort of catch to open it up or like an indication of whether I had to twist it or something like that. But there was nothing obvious from what I could see. And what I could see did seem to show a bit of glue or epoxy happening. So I'm gonna put up a few of those stills just to show what I'm talking about there. And you can see the little black portions. Seems like those little slugs are glued to the backing. So it seems like, from what I can tell from here, that the whole thing is glued together. So what I'm gonna try now then, I'd like to keep the 
antenna itself functioning because I want to be able to probe a working system. Uh, I don't care so much that it's waterproof. I can just make sure I only put it out when it's uh, nice weather. So what I'm considering doing now is drilling a hole right up on this shoulder, just on this flat part here. From my borescope probing, it looks like there's no critical components right behind here. So I'm hoping that by putting a hole here, I'll be able to use the borescope to get a more direct, better view of the joints around the outside to see what that looks like. So I'm going to go set that up and then I'll let you watch me drill a big one inch hole through the back of my Starlink dish. All right, here goes. Wish me luck. I'm running the drill fairly low speed in hopes of not damaging anything. It looks like there's some supporting plastic structure in behind, so I might run into some of that, but fingers crossed. Okay, I'm just going to pause it there and take a peek through my hole. A little bit nerve-wracking here. Okay, I don't see anything critical underneath, so I'm going to keep going. just don't want to put a lot of forward pressure because I don't want it to punch through so I'm going nice and slow to try to protect this dish. It's uh, thicker plastic than it looks here. Whew, what a mess. Still pretty strong though, but let's keep going nice and slow. Ooh, this is nerve wracking. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can pull this out instead of pushing in. Oh, I made a mess in there too. I'm gonna to have to vacuum this out. Oh man, okay, I see what happened. So I did run into one of those supports, but that's not so bad. Um, the main thing I wanted to do is get enough clearance to put in my bore scope again. So, okay, nerve wracking, but there's a new hole. Look inside, shall we? Okay, definitely a lot easier to maneuver through this hole than kind of going down through this test port and back up again. So this is already a good start. Okay. And since I already made a mess, I'm just gonna go right ahead and do another hole. Here we go. So this one is a little bit closer to the edge. There's a small uh, structural support plastic in there. So I'm gonna drill just below that. That ends about there. And just same as before, but hopefully right through. Whew, this is terrifying. I hope all of you people at home who've been waiting for Starlink are cringing right now, because I, I am. That one did go in, so hopefully I didn't poke anything important. Oh, this is so nerve-wracking. Okay. What a mess. 
Oh, it looks like I did scrape a little bit of the metal shield in here, but that doesn't seem too bad. Okay, back in with the bore scope. So it's hard to tell exactly how that's going to come undone, but it does look like a, a clip of some kind. Okay, I kind of hate to do it, but I think I'm going to drill one more hole. This is very close to the edge though, so it's much narrower. Let's try it. Take a peek in there. Oh yeah, I'm much closer. This is a little bit terrifying, but let's try it. I think I am actually scratching with the tip of the spade now, so I think I'm going to try cutting the rest out with a utility knife. And I'll see if I can get a vacuum while I'm there. Back in a second. All right, a little bit cleaner here. And I'm going to try to cut out the last little bit with a utility knife, um, just to avoid the center of the, the spade bit poking right through and damaging the board underneath. Okay, there's my third hole. Now, I'm definitely right next to the edge here, so I'm going to use my little scope again, and I'm going to snap some very close-up photos for you. Okay, so I think I managed to get this clip undone in here, like you can see in this photo, but it was quite a bit of work, and there are clips all around the outside of this dish. And it's a pretty big diameter dish. So what I'm thinking of doing is actually drilling a few more test holes up high near the shoulder, using the bore scope to check out to make sure there's no major bumps or, or kind of obstacles around the other part of the dish. Like over here, I know the ethernet cable winds around in here a little bit, so something to be careful of here. And if there's no kind of obvious obstructions, I think what I might do is take a, a spin saw or maybe I'll get a Dremel and just go all the way around the circumference, you know, a few inches from the edge, just to remove this whole center section. And then that should let me get in with some snips or something and just snip all around the outside to get rid of those um, little tabs that are holding the white piece on and then that would completely free it up. That does mean that I'm going to lose kind of the, the supporting structure around the side, but I'm hoping that what I can actually do is end up cutting out the center and kind of putting that back in place with the stand so that then I will be able to uh, still run it, still use it outdoors, but just without the white shell on the back. So definitely not weatherproof or anything, but that it should still work. So I think that's going to be my way forward. And because that's going to be super messy, I think I might take this out to my garage. So back in a bit. Hey everybody, I moved out in the garage, so hopefully we can do some more messy work. Uh, while I'm out here, somebody asked, will this choke fit through some uh, PVC conduit? So this is three quarter inch conduit. This is a three quarter inch choke. It goes in, but it definitely does not go through. This is a one inch PVC conduit. And you can see here, it goes through very easily. So if you use one inch, you're gonna be okay. I say this before I start putting some one inch holes in my Starlink dish. Wish me luck, I'm cringing all the way.
Okay, so far so good. Whew. Okay, one last hole. And remember, these holes are just so I can peek through to make sure there's no uh, kind of obstructions or anything near the end. And if not, I'm going to try to cut the whole top off. As if drilling holes wasn't terrifying enough. I think I did nick that a little bit. There's a, a some kind of pretty rigid metal plate down here, so hopefully it's saving me. But that did bottom out there. Eek. All right, so I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna vacuum and then go in there with my scope and I'll snap a few pictures for you. We've already looked through this hole here. That one looks okay. And this one. That one looks okay. And then this last one here. All right, so what I did is I just used a wood block as a spacer and I just put a pencil against it and went all the way around the edge and just made a little line. And that's going to be where I run this guy. So this is a spin saw. It's actually designed for drywall, so I don't know how it's going to work on the plastic here. It also, even with the guard all the way extended here, it still sticks down a little bit further than I'm comfortable. So I'm going to have to maybe hold it steady against my leg and then rotate the dish in front of it or just take really small steps, we'll see, I don't know. Um, this is probably even more terrifying than drilling the holes. So I'm gonna put on some PPE and then get started. Wish me luck. Let me just tell you, I'm going to be super embarrassed when somebody else finds a much easier way to open this. <laughs> okay, let's see if it works. Oh, here it is. Woo! Not much to look at. Now right down here, we've got our ethernet connector and the wires for our servos. So I'm going to disconnect those. Oh, and now we're disconnected. All right, that's a bit cleaner. So the last step I want to try to do is get all of this white plastic that's left over off. I think I'm going to be able to get some snips in there and just snip all the little white connector bits and pull the whole thing off. So here goes. Let's see if these big guys will fit. This like a little weatherproof seal maybe. 
Um, which I, I guess I'll leave for now, but... Oh, okay, here we go. That's satisfying. That is satisfying. Whew, okay. Wow, so it really is a flat panel. There's not much to it. Pretty cool. Now, the next question is how to get this metal plate off. Kind of feels like it's glued on. All right, I'm going to put this aside just for a second and uh, see if I can free up the, the mounting staff and the gears and see if I can reattach them. Okay, now I'm just trying to separate the center plastic piece here from the rest. I don't know if it's needed, but uh, I'm going to see if I can do it so that I can reattach the motors and the mount. Okay, the spin saw did a pretty good job. I'm just gonna clean it up with a knife and then that's that. Okay, I think that's the end of the garage work for now. I'm gonna move back inside. See you in a second. Woo, that was a bit of a marathon. The next step to disassembly is this metal backing plate. It does look like it's glued or adhered somehow right onto the panel. So I think I might need to use some kind of heat to see if I can get it separated. Uh, I don't have a heat gun right now, so that's something I'm gonna have to buy. So what I'm gonna do now is on this uh, ethernet port where those wires connected, there's also a three pin, TX, RX, and ground, which looks like a serial port for some kind of a serial console. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the metal on, I'm gonna put it all back together, and fingers crossed, see if it still seems to work. Uh, if it does, I'm gonna solder into those three points and see if I can get some kind of a console on the actual uh, computer that's running this terminal. So this is part one. I'm gonna be doing more of the teardown, getting this metal off, analyzing that data in later parts. Uh, Subscribe down below if you want to see my next steps for this. Hit the bell icon to get notified as soon as I post my video. Let me know in the comments if you think I'm crazy for tearing this apart. It was a bit terrifying with the power drill in here. Let me know what you think. I, like I said at the beginning, I was a bit conflicted on whether or not I should do this or just enjoy Starlink as it is, but in the end, I just had to know more about how it works. So here I am at this stage. This is part one. I'm going to put it all back together now, power it up, and see if it still seems to work. All right, here we go.
reattach the motor power, reattach it onto the dish here, and the ethernet. Easy peasy. Got my trusty tripod back. Oh, a little bit lighter than it used to be, but not much. Just like new, what do you think? All right, let's power it on now. There's no plastic left here, so I don't know if there's any potential voltage on here, so I'm not gonna touch it. I'm gonna stay a bit clear, but I'll let you watch it powered up. If it works like last time, it should level itself out, and we know at least it works somewhat. Okay, here we go, powering up. All right, here we go, fingers crossed. Oh, the suspense. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Sweet. One thing I noticed the other day is it'll keep tracking if you tilt it. It'll reorient and re-level itself. And then if you put it back, so there you go. It still seems to be working. I need to take it outside to see if it'll actually still get a signal and uh, connect to the internet, but there you go. One first stage teardown of a Starlink dish. More coming soon, I gotta get that metal off, I gotta look at those data lines, transmit, receive, ground, looks like a serial console. Thank you everyone for watching. Remember to subscribe, like, comment, all that other good stuff. See you next time.